Hello and welcome to Status Quo. I'm super happy that you found your way here today. I have a very, very inspiring conversation here for you today that I've had with a very, very dear friend of mine, with Rebecca Kitzula. And we talked about how to find community, what community can be, how to inspire other people, about how doing something can change you as a human and so many more exciting things. So make yourself comfy and wherever you are, I hope that you have an amazing time listening to this conversation. I'm so happy that we're sitting here right now. This is so surreal. (laughs) Yeah. And this is so surreal because you've known about this idea from the very start and I'm very honoured to have you as the first person to share this space with and I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. <laughs> and you stole my words, I was, wanted to say I'm super honoured to be the first person and to have, to have in some ways seen how this idea has developed, I mean... I don't think I saw it at the very beginning, but since you you spoke it out, yeah, it just flashed, <laughs> and then we're here. Maybe we can go right into this. That's actually mm-hmm. the perfect, perfect um, segue. We met at the Alcoy in November 2018, mm-hmm. and I would love if you could say what that is, explain what that is, and... Maybe also tell a bit ha- about how you got involved with that. Sure. Um, okay, so I've been working in uh, social circles for a very long time. Since uh, I was 15, maybe, in Italy. I come from Italy. Uh, and then the climate issue has become uh, my main focal point. Uh, all the issue on climate justice and the... Uh, uh, problem of the cri- the climate crisis we have uh, and how that affects uh, the social tissue of our whole societies. Um, and I came to Vienna two years ago and I felt very alone with the whole thing. I didn't know anything going on or anything. Um, and then everything changed after, well, I came to Vienna three years ago. After two years, everything changed um, last June when I came in contact with uh, uh, system change, not climate change. It's a um, um, left group, uh, an activism group, uh, and they introduced me to a very thick uh, and dense social um, tissue of all possible organizations and initiatives like food sharing, like... Um, Caritas, but not only uh, like uh, food sovereignty, and uh, the world became really um, diverse and really rich. Uh, and after that, it's just been a roller coaster. Um, I came into another organization. It's called Climates, and they were organizing uh, uh, the Climates International Summit in Vienna, and it was a ten or a, a one week. Uh, conference again with uh, a lot of speakers from Sea Shepherd to um, sustainable initiatives and startups, um, Greenpeace, a lot of a lot of speakers from all different bereiche, um, from all different areas. Areas, thank you. Um, and there were many students and many. Um, people there that came to listen and one of them um, came from Amsterdam and he brought an idea with him and this is something I, that I find really wonderful how I- ideas um, he, he passed it on to me and at these conferences there's so much energy especially when you meet with people that are that have your your 
the, the, the think in the same way or in a very similar way, or there's something that really connects. And I remember sitting in, um, in a bar with him in a cafe and, and just like, I'm a person that always has 3000 ideas and not many of them become <laughs> reality. Um, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was just, um, talking so much about how wonderful everything was and how, how beautiful it was to connect. And he, his name is Leonard. And Leonard looked at me in the eyes and told me, do something. Like, he was like, it's nice to talk about it, but do something. Don't throw this all away. And it, it was after a week of meeting the same people every day and working and gaining consciousness and gaining power and gaining knowledge about what is going on and also creating a network of of empowerment really of we can do things and there this uh climate is a international uh ngo and they're working on empowerment advocacy they're working in really close relationship with the united nations um and the, just the fact that so many people from so many different parts of the world from nepal to france to amsterdam to like it was really branches from all of the world um that had met there and he came with this idea and he told me about elkois what elkois are um should i just give a short introduction um elkois so every year there is um the cop that is a conference of parties that is the main um <laughs> the the conference where the united nations the all the all the nations in the united nations meet to talk about uh the climate issue and the way to adapt and to uh face it uh and mitigation and what are the um maßnahmen um, the things that they do yeah to 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 face it and how what each country will do and kind of to try to coordinate on this um in this conference um the entities that have the right to vote are countries nation, nations um totally independent of how many people live in this or how um what how problematic the situation is so um italy has the same right to vote as vietnam Uh, whereas Vietnam is in much more danger uh, in the climate issue uh, as Italy is. So to face this uh, problem and this issue, which is a big issue on also equality uh, of the peoples around the world, um, there have been, we there are constituencies. And a constituency um, is like a group of organizations that, well, yeah, group up <laughs> to to sustain and to bring forward the um, interests and ideas of uh, certain minorities. So, for example, uh, especially in the situation right now, let's take an example of Brazil, would not be very interested in um, bringing forward indigenous rights. But if indigenous peoples come together from all the world, from Australia to North America, South America, Africa and so on, uh, they have a much stronger voice. And this is the concept uh, of constituencies, as I have understood it at least. Um, and they have no right to vote, but they do have right to uh, talk and to um, express their opinions and to try and direct the discourse at these conferences. And one of these constituencies is Yunga, that is Youth NGO. And it is the youth constituency of the world, basically. So uh, all the future generations are interests. Um, And Jungo um, makes a, a COI, which is a conference of youth, just before the COP. And the idea of that is bring together all the youth uh, that is going to the COP, ideally representatives from all the countries in the world, um, and come together to network, to empower, to make a strategy and to work together Uh, to bring our voices in the most effective way in the conference of parties and to make us ourselves heard. Um, which is a, a humongous effort, really, because 
it's a three day conference to do all of this for from people from all the world. So you might imagine um, it's quite, yeah, it's you're asking a lot of ourselves. Uh, what developed in the last three years um, are local versions of this conference, which actually serve exactly the same purpose um, on one side. And on the other side are kind of fill the gap between the so the conference of youth is very near to the to the institutional level um whereas the conference the local conferences of youth which are the local versions of it are very close to the youth in the country and to fill this gap between institution and the youth in the country they exist and they bring together uh, local groups and and make to to give to give us a voice to to let people uh, to let us know that we have a voice and we we can network we can communicate and we can effectively bring our ideas across this ladder that goes up until we are talking in front of the United Nations um, because I feel yeah well the issue there is there's often it's often very detached what is happening on an institutional level and what is happening um in our daily lives i have most certainly felt that <laughs> the frustration of young people when you feel like you can't influence anything because politics is just so incredibly far away right mm -hmm. and you feel like you can never have a voice or your voice will never be big enough to actually influence anything and that is a, an amazing opportunity to be able to include our voices in the climate negotiations and uh, the the thing is um one can discuss on how much it is working right now there are many critical points in the whole system starting from the conference of parties uh, till the way information gets brought up but the thing that for sure works is the fact that these conf local conferences of youth are um very uh, they have um they are stamped by the u n let's say they are really recognized internationally and recognized from our own countries so it's a very powerful tool to um to bring forward and what what I forgot to say is that uh Leonard came to me with this idea and he is um one of the organizers of the first local conference of youth in Europe. Uh, that took place in Amsterdam this October. And I met him uh, on June, in June, before that happened. And um, he just passed the the torch to me too. I, I really felt lit up by so much energy. And um, I decided to try to make one in Austria and with the uh, help and the co cooperation, I mean, I wasn't a leader of this group or anything, but a group of five people came together and we did um, the second conference of youth, local conference of youth in Europe this year, uh, in Austria. And the crazy thing is there have been others, but there have never been some in Europe, which is um, really indicative, I think, of how... Um, the consciousness of this crisis is lacking in uh pass me the word developed countries i don't think that's the right way to <laughs> say it but i'm feeling my english is failing now but let's say in north global north countries um we are the ones emitting the most and destroying the climate the most and yet the ones that are probably no not probably that are for sure feeling the least um, consequences so it's a huge uh, injustice to start with and we are also doing very little on a civil rights or more on a consciousness level like what can I do as uh, a single person on an institutional level the ELCO is trying to give a way to answer that um, yes and it's it's kind of worked this year we had a lot of attention from um our president van der bellen alexander van der bellen um we had communication with uh, um 
Frau Köstinger. She's um, in the Ministry for Sustainability and Tourism, um, which is a, a bit critical. Um, also, we see it as critical from our uh, 2018 Elcor organizing group. Um, and also with the wonderful um, mayor of Vienna, which also gave us so much support. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was at that conference. That's actually <laughs> how we how we got to know each other. Yes. And I'm super grateful for that. It the way that I experienced it from the perspective of someone who went there, not knowing what would happen, was that it was just this incredibly inspiring environment. There were so many young people who all didn't know what to expect, but everyone was so passionate about the topic, about the topic of environment, of climate change. And it was very intense. We had so many workshops over those three days and so much input. And at the same time, we had so much time to connect and to have this incubator pretty much to hatch and grow our ideas. It, it was this incredible environment for me, really. Would you like to walk us through? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we had uh, a keynote, which needs to be at every conference, right, <laughs> of incredible speakers from different areas of sustainability and a panel discussion as well with young people who went for the COP, to the COP, for example, and also a professor from a Viennese University, Helga Komp-Korb, who was also very inspiring. And then we had, we were at a, a university in Vienna, a technical university, and we always ate together and then had a workshop that we could choose from. Like there were so many workshops that we could choose from. <laughs> it was incredible. I don't know how you guys did it. <laughs> and it pretty much covered everything from storytelling to how to make your own cosmetics or climate simulation, negotiation simulations there were so many skills to be acquired and there was so much knowledge that was passed on and it was an incredible experience for myself I think it was one of the most transformative things I've ever gone through I was not the same person when I walked out of this conference I don't know what you guys did there <laughs> but the atmosphere was so incredible and I've talked to so many people who've said this environment of inspiration it has given me the hope back that we can actually do something it has given me the drive to be part of something to be part of the change mm -hmm. and yeah that's that's really how how i experienced the whole thing i think that's a really um a really important point you've touched on because um my experience of um, organizing this it was um, so the conference was for 200 people um, three days long I think there were around 40 workshops overall um, there were mm, lunchtime meal was always uh, served plus uh, food the whole time through and uh, we had a lot of cooperations with uh, for with sponsors food sponsors as well as um, a bit less, but also money sponsors, and we had um, food food sharing also, and the food saving kitchen, which means that the food that was cooked there was um, either saved, it would have been thrown away, um, or it was from biological uh, farms and so on. So a very um, a social kitchen they're called so volunteers cooking and that was actually also a workshop like to learn to cook for 200 people <laughs> um, but apart this I, I wanted to say that was just to give some framing of what how big the event was and what it has been um, and I think there were yeah around 30 organizations just involved in the workshops as plus at least 20 uh, supporting the um, the conference in itself as as it is a institutional conference um you have to uh have proof for yango uh that it is 
something that the the social tissue and the tissue uh, of organizations working uh, in in climate in the climate issue in your country supports your conference so it's really it has to be representative of what is happening in your country or whatever is the local geographical area you're doing the conference for um what what really flashed me out about the whole thing was um i had no idea i had really no idea what about anything before june um it's uh, one impression that really came over was that um i think or how i felt it was that me and the group and i of uh people that organized it were really like totally into the game and really had um knew what was going on everywhere and really knowledgeable about climate politics and um cops and coys and el coys and young thousands abbreviations and uh had like a huge network network of organizations working with us and we were we are in this uh NGO climates so it kind of came over i think as if we were uh really um, grounded people in the field but the truth is that what i learned is to make a change you just have to um i really love it. it there's a tipping point there's a tipping point where an idea comes from being an idea to becoming reality and uh i will i am so grateful for um for leonard he was a tipping point for me um because that time he really told me like you know he <laughs> i was quite angry at him for a while because i he really told me like in my face like just do it stop talking about it like um as if as if i were doing nothing and it really felt at the at the moment he told it to me like uh, how how do you dare come into my private life so much and tell me like something that's strong it doesn't feel so strong when i say it now but at the time it was like it changed everything for me and when i stopped criticizing the way or what he had told me and started to understand why and what it really meant that changed everything and that was a tipping point for me where the idea goes from being an idea to okay i'm doing this and after you go to the i'm, I'm doing this it, it still doesn't mean you have a plan on how to do it um and but the the thing is the empowerment and the the really the the power you have in your hands when you decide to do something is huge i think we we can see it now from um movements like fridays for future greta thunberg she also did something which isn't really big but she as a me as a 15 year old student i would have never trusted myself to just not go to school because that was for me it was a, a god-given law that i had to go to school and i was very diligent and nothing could not like i'm not saying she's not diligent but i was like that was the most important thing in the world um but she saw much greater and she trusted herself and i think that uh, her parents not being very happy she skipped school i think <laughs> so for example and it's not the only example it's just the biggest one right now or malala for example she, writing her i think she wrote a blog or she uh, did also in some way she was in international communication and still doing it you know um the moment you decide to do something and you you the ceased is doing you you just do it you just do it yes is a moment you gain power and the thing is no one gives it to you you take it um but i think it's really hard to to realize this for me it took, it took me years it took me years and the thing actually i enjoyed the most and i am enjoying the most in this exact moment where i'm sitting across from you um is seeing how the elkoi um worked in this exact way on so many people um and i am humbled by it because um i i was together with these other four people we were coordinating the conference um so 
we had a plan of what was going on. Um, and we had no plan five months before. It, it, it all happened in five months. And it was kind of really exhausting. But to see now how the people that were at the Elkoi and had no plan the first day just gained community and gained courage and gained this type of empowerment that was, I don't like to say was given to me, but that I realized in myself and the way they realized it in themselves and the way you're doing this podcast right now. And would you like to tell us about the ideas pitch? I would really love for you to do that. <laughs> I just have to repeat what you said before again, because I'm loving it so much that no one gives the power to you. You just have to take it. But taking the power and actually doing something gives you such an empowerment. Mm -hmm. You feel like you can change things just because you get involved with doing something. That's how I have experienced it very, very much in the last half year. Because I'm also quite new. It doesn't feel like it anymore, but I'm quite new to that whole environment scene in Vienna here. I started really being active in September basically, where I, I started this training with Generation Earth. And from there, I started gaining a bit of courage. I was absolutely terrified before the first training because I thought I knew the least about the environment and people were not going to take me serious. And being the perfectionist that I am, I researched like plastics before I went to the training and all that. Like I, I was so scared. So <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> And then coming to the conference, I felt a little bit mm, safer, I I suppose, but still like shit scared of other people. And then I I had had this idea of making a podcast because it's an incredible way of sharing information, I think, for the environment scene, because there was nothing really that I liked. And... I had this idea and it terrified me so much because I felt that it was something that was important to me. And that is when it gets most terrifying, I think, yeah. because you actually care about it. You care what the outcome is. And I kept it to myself for a really long time. And then at the conference, it came up again. And I basically had this idea to have an ideas pitch for all the people at the conference and so where everyone could bring up their ideas that they had had before or during the conference to just get them out there basically because I believe that it's incredibly powerful to speak about your ideas mm -hmm. that's the first step of getting them out there and actually doing them and I talked to the team about it and we actually did it we had this pitching I think it was morning or like after lunch or something yeah anyway it's we got together minute. and all shared our ideas and it was this environment of appreciation no matter what the idea was people were just appreciating it so much and we thought no i really thought no one would trust themselves it was the third day and you went first and and then it was like okay <laughs> what <laughs> will, will anyone else will come anyone up? else come up and, and we thought it was about 150 people in the room and we thought okay it would be great if like three four i think you were like 15 At in least. the end <laughs> it was crazy it was crazy it was crazy because there's so much ferment there's so much stuff happening under the surface and if you give the people if you give every person actually the possibility of of expression I think that's the word yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's it's really powerful yeah Com community is so powerful that's also something I have really learned in the past half year that community gets you so far mm -hmm. you could never have taken the steps if you were alone yeah and I really experienced that after the pitch as well because part of the pitch was to ask for what you need basically how the community at the conference can support you in doing that bringing the idea to life and I didn't have a proper request because the idea was such a little baby idea but 
so many people came to me afterwards, at least 30 people. Really? And were just, yeah, and most of them just said, that is such an amazing idea, just do it. I, I support you 100%, just let me know what you need. Mm -hmm. And then some people came and were like, you know, I know about recording, I know about which programs to use, and if you need anything, like, just call me, I'll give you my number. And I was overwhelmed by how willing people are to help you. Mm -hmm. it, it is such a big step to go out there. It was such a big step for me to say it and to bring it into the world. But it was incredibly beautiful to see how people support you. I think there's something really um, deep about vulnerability in some way. Like, I mean, in the... If we want to go about cliches, uh, in the way we live now, everyone, not in tight communities, but just thinking just broadly and a bit superficially about the world, um, we are very much on posed to be the best versions of ourselves and more than the best version from an intimate view, the best versions of like sure of ourselves and the best qualifications and just presenting ourselves in the most secure and um, impressive way possible and when we when we come I think when when we are, allow ourselves to come back to what makes us so human and so fragile and we show that this this intimate thing is um we're using the word powerful a lot. <laughs> Do you think so? <laughs> but this this moment of of showing something that could potentially really hurt you, and and when and what you receive back in such an environment is exactly what you described. Um, I think this is changes so much changes the way we see ourselves also and we see our vulnerabilities because as you said the more you care the more you're scared and the more you care the more you're vulnerable and if the more you're vulnerable the more powerful this thing is and um we we tend to avoid of things that touch us really deeply or avoid putting them out and um, I mean, I put myself in this category um, or l trying to learn to not do that anymore, to stop avoiding that. Um, but I think it's really, there's something really true about it in some way. Something I really wanted to ask you is because that whole organization process of the Elkway was very, very intense as you described you had five months where you didn't really know what it was going to become in the end and it was very intense and stressful mm -hmm. how do you think you've changed through that hmm. um at the beginning uh it's a very how i've changed so As I said, it was just a seed and then it become became a really big thing. And by no means was I the only actor or the principal one in doing this. Um, I really like to think about this idea as having been given to me. I just brought it forward for a while and then uh, met wonderful people. Um, Hendrik, Adriana, Katja, Nina, um, which uh, helped me and took this idea, made it theirs and brought themselves in it. And this is something uh, I think was incredible for me to see how um, I just got something and then gave it forward and then how this this huge thing started to grow from planting roots in each and every one of us. Um, as I said, like, 
at the beginning, I remember us sitting together. It was three of us at the beginning. Um, and just not really having a plan of what to do. And just being, okay, we're, we're going to start writing emails to organizations and ask them if they would support us. And um, feeling like it was there was so much excitement and so much uncertainty. And we had to... Like five months is a really short time for to organize something of the sort, especially because it's a very institutional thing. So, you, it it has relevance, which is uh, a a crazy thing, but it also gives you a lot of responsibility. Um, so, <laughs> I'm trying to answer your question. It's really hard, actually. How I changed? I think. Um, for once, like skills, like the the most superficial thing, let's say, like I learned so much. I learned so much from finances, organization, from the people that worked with me. How to um, how to work with um, presse, with uh, press. the the press. How to work with social media. Uh, how to approach. Um, politics and institutions with an idea or with a, like with a project how to uh, yeah manage the financial crowdfunding and all of that so the that that was a really big um occupation i wouldn't say burden but it was very really a lot of th- things to do and a lot of network like you had to keep in, being in contact with everyone um and and that was one part of it the going one level deeper uh, how do you plan something of the sort like what do we want in it what what do we want to give to the people that come um and what the program like what what do we want people to come out with and more than skills and knowledge uh, I think our idea was really to to give a sense of community, to give a sense of possibility, to give a sense of support. Um, but being like we needed support too at the time, like we had no idea of how how to do things. So one thing I definitely learned is that um, you don't have to be a superhero to make um, something really worthwhile. Um, and that I I was freaking scared, honestly, about the whole thing. Like I was super excited and really scared and really um, in doubt until the very last moment that this would be something worthwhile. Um, And (laughs) then, of course, the work with the group, we... Between uh, five people doing everything, um, it was emotionally really um, heavy for f- some points. Um, because uh, first thing, we didn't know each other before starting this. So um, not really random people came in, but I I knew two of them. Uh, and I had met them maybe uh, at the at the conference of climate, so like ten days before. Um, and when you start building something that is so um, big and so emotionally uh, loaded, uh, and with so many ideas with people you don't know, uh, and you have to be, it it takes time before you become a team, and before you realize that. For me, at least, what I realized the most important thing is that you can trust the people you're working with and that you can trust that you don't have to be, again, a superhero. You don't have to always do everything or always be in the best mood or be able to do things. We, I think we all had crash downs while doing it. So it was so much support. There was so much support there. Um when when one of us was really falling down and really tired and stressed out by everything, the other four would bring their work forward and try to support this other person and not 
like it's it's useless to to be like okay you should be doing this or whatever if it's okay to not be able to do something sometimes and that is the power we were talking before about the community because mm-hmm. when i when i connect to you in a human way and i realize you are in a different difficult situation right now i can help you instead of it's it's really a huge difference between um pointing the finger and saying you should have done that if you didn't do it because you just couldn't because you weren't you weren't just feeling uh well which sounds really banal <laughs> said like this but the the support of a team is very different from just working with five people it's very different to feel um safe and i think that is definitely something one has to work on when when you build something like that yeah. and for the rest just shortly i think the thing that changed me the most of all was this tipping point i was talking about before i i would have never thought i could have done something of the sort and i am really just a, any like not anyone but not in any way a special or incredible person or anything uh but the moment you start believing is the moment you can um, make other people believe in it too and then it becomes really powerful powerful again <laughs> <laughs> seems to just really be a good word yeah <laughs> <laughs> got it that i'm i'm soaking up everything you said about the team and that because mm-hmm. you know now it's our turn to build yes. a team and to build a new team for the new alcoy and we just had a team weekend this past saturday and sunday and already there it was so beautiful to see how people walked in on saturday and we also didn't all know each other super well some people did some didn't and then to see how it changes over this working process to how on yesterday when when we got this we got a, an award from the uh boku um That's and we got a thousand euro basically to support our project and already there it was all of us on the stage and it felt like it was so much more about the team than about what we were doing it was not about the work it was about being together and working together mm-hmm. and that could be the purpose in itself because it empowers us so much it gives us so much to work in this team to learn from each other to get to know, know a different perspective on things mm-hmm. and to be open to also fight sometimes and to not to also be, fight sometimes yeah, yeah. and to 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 learn how people can see things differently and mm-hmm. you can't always go head forward mm-hmm. like you have to find a way of working together still and it it i'm so grateful to be part of this and to be able to learn from other people yeah i i could talk to you forever really <laughs> <laughs> but i think it has been a lot longer than it feels for us so yeah. i have three final questions that i'd well, like to ask you okay. but you don't need to answer them extensively it's okay. more yeah short short um answers maybe yes, the yeah. first one is What advice would you give your 15-year-old self to to take time? I think I I have always rushed into everything thinking I was always late. And I think uh the moment I, I you stop wanting everything is the moment you are able to receive truly. Mm, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> My next question is what change in the world do you want to be part of? Yeah, it's not hard. I want equity or to really see fair possibilities for people and most of more than that actually I would really like to see people care for situations that are far away or th- or that are really near or that they they don't know or that they or we really easily ignore i am 
just an, a quick example is like the way we are so used to seeing people sitting on the street asking for money that we just pass by. And that should, that cannot be normality. And it is. And that's just one symptom of a million things that are not working out right now. And I have the feeling that it's hard to make everyone care. But I don't think that they don't care in some way. I think that we are... Um, um, we have an anesthesia, but like we don't feel it so much. But we would care if we would let ourselves feel it more. Mm. And how have you grown in the last year? <laughs> I should answer that shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Um, yeah. No, in how have I grown? In so many ways, um, but I'll choose two. <laughs> um, on one side, uh, I feel I'm much more conscious of what you can do and the way you can do it. I think that changes a lot. Um, there are so many ways to work, for example, in a group um, using non-hierarchical -hier organizations and consent or consent based and um, I think also really shed, shedding off this idea of um, how do you say Leistung of <sighs> my English is not serving me right now yes of like having to be at the best the best or the top or having to um like to be able to do everything all the time um, and to be s sure of yourself really this image that we really try to bring out to the world how that actually very often hurts more than serves especially when we're, when when it's not about presenting your image anymore it's about doing the work and when when you really have to sit down and do the work, then you want to have, I want to have around myself a group that supports and a group that will lift me up when I am falling and which I can help lift up when someone else is falling because that is the texture about of humankind, I think. That is what makes us uh, strong. And it, it comes back to this caring thing. Uh, that on one one side uh, that was the first thing that really this group processes and the second thing I think is um, a bit more personal like individual actually of um, letting go of this rush and uh, this image and this um, having to be wonderful the whole time or wanting to be wonderful the whole time um, and I think that is, and also admitting that you don't know, because the moment you admit you don't know, then it's the moment you you can start learning, I think, um, instead of, but like openly admitting it, you know, admitting it to yourself and deeply understanding that, that, that it's okay because no one knew everything, knows everything from the beginning and giving yourself the opportunity to fail and and giving yourself the opportunity to stand back up without feeling like a failure because um and and, and the the only true failure is like not to stand up back again and i'll close it with this wonderful <laughs> sentence <laughs> this yeah. whole wonderful conversation <laughs> i think that's a perfect ending mm -hmm. I could just sit here forever. I'm mm. I'm sitting in this happiness right now of this amazing meal conversation. That meal conversation for those who might not have had the word for me is a conversation that fills you up just like a meal and it feels you've just had <laughs> something that really fills you up so from nice. the inside. And that's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. 
for sitting here with me. It was an absolute pleasure for me too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it for today. And thank you so much also for being part of this by listening and I can't believe that this is happening right now. I've, I've worked towards this <laughs> since November and I'm really excited to start this journey and it is going to be an interesting one with a lot of learnings for for me, I hope, and for you, I hope, as well. And um, I'm really glad if you come with me on this journey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.